Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining me today for our webinar, Using Surveys for Your Business. My name is Jill, and I'm the Training and Education Manager here at Vertical Response. And today I'm going to take you through some tips and ideas and even whys of doing surveys for your business and how they can help um, the feedback you can get, how helpful it can be for your business. Just a couple things before I jump into the webinar. First of all, this will probably be around 35 minutes long. Um, at the end, there will be time for Q&A. So if you do think of questions along the way, go ahead and type those into the box that you see in your GoToWebinar window, and I will be happy to answer all your questions at the end of the webinar. Uh, one of the questions we get at every webinar, and it will be one of the questions here, is, is this being recorded? And the answer is yes, I am recording this. Um, it will go up on our website, the resources page at Vertical Response. Um, we are in the process of revamping our website, so our creative team won't be able to get them up there until February. I will, however, get them up on the help site by the end of the day. So if you want to go and refresh your memory a little bit, uh, that will always be available to you. And check out the help site for now. So let's go ahead and get started with the webinar. So first of all, this is what our agenda is going to cover. So if you've been thinking about doing a survey or you're wondering why you should do a survey for your business, I'm going to go over some of the whys of doing a survey. Um, also some ideas and how to plan to create a survey. We're going to talk a little bit about analyzing and using your reporting data because surveys obviously give you tons of information. Um, I have some tips as well as examples of uh, surveys that people have conducted. And then at the end, there are some resources for you. And like I said, there will be time for Q&A. So first of all, let's talk about why you should do a survey in the first place. Um, first of all, it can give you some really great insight into what your customers or potential customers, um, things like that, um, people who are part of your organization or volunteers, it gives you ideas of what they are thinking, um, what they need, you can get um, a better understanding of more than just what they're thinking or what they're needing. So you can <clears throat> ask questions specific to a sales process, to a donation process. Um, you can find out if there is um, any pain point somewhere in using your product and be able to figure out how to get that information to your customers. Uh, you can ask questions. Um, it isn't just how are we doing, but you can ask specific questions like what would you like to see in our product or service. You can find people who are advocates for your business, so the people who love what you're doing, the people who are saying, hey, this is a great product, this is a great service, you should be part of this. Um, those are great people to have on your side and to be able to identify them can be a big win for your business. And of course, it's a great way to keep people up on what's going on with your organization or what's going on with your business. So before you get started on your survey, you want to determine what you want to get out of the survey. So are you trying to learn something specific? Do you want to know how your customer support reps are doing? Is that what your survey is going to be about? Do you want to know how people like your products, um, how they like the events that your organization puts on. So think about what it is that you want to get out of the survey before you start deciding what you're going to do with the survey itself. So set some goals. Um, we have an example here on the slide. The goal is learn how attendees felt about an event you recently held. And so the action is from the information that you get from the survey, you can make changes and improve the next event that you're going to do. Um, your goal could be find out how the sales process on your website works or doesn't work. And then the action would be from the feedback, implement changes that make it easier for people to make a purchase or you know, make a couple of little changes if that's what you need to do. So what you plan to get from the survey that you're doing and then how you can go about making changes from the feedback that you get. So a couple things to keep in mind. You want to have a specific goal in mind before you start. Um, think about 
what you want to ask. What kind of questions are you wanting to find out from your customers, from your volunteers, from the people you're going to survey? And then think of the questions that you're going to ask and then pare down those questions to the best ones, the ones that will get the specific answers to the goal you have in mind. Keep it short, and I can't emphasize this enough. People have a super short attention span. We talk about this all the time when we're talking about the length of your email when you're creating an email um, or when you're creating a post for your social networks. People have a very short attention span these days, and I think the Internet makes it even shorter. So you don't want to make a super long survey, otherwise you could lose people along the way. If it's very important to your business or very important to the objectives of your survey to have a longer survey, you may want to think about having an incentive for people to finish it. So if they get through the survey, they could be entered into a drawing to win something. Um, if they finish the survey, they get a $5 Starbucks card. You know, something that gets them through the survey so that you can get all of the information that you're looking for and get everyone through the survey. Um, the longer surveys are tougher to get people to complete, for sure. And then be sure to set expectations for how long it's going to take people to do the survey. You know, are you just asking five questions? Is it something that's going to take them 20 minutes? Make sure they, the people taking the survey understand how long it's going to be so that they can set aside the, the amount of time um, that they need to have for that. Um, when you're creating your questions as well, one of the things to keep in mind is that they need to be really clear. You want people to read the question and say, yes, I know what the answer to this is. And as a person who's in the industry or who's running the business, all your questions are probably going to make sense. But try to think of it as a person who doesn't work in your industry and what they're going to think when they read your, your questions. So testing is really important when it comes to creating your survey. A couple things to keep in mind as well. Um, Keep your questions short. Not only your survey should be short, your questions should be short. If it's a very long paragraph that somebody has to read, it makes it harder for them to understand everything in it potentially and be able to finish answering the questions. Also, if you find that a lot of your questions are starting with the same phrase, for example, how likely is it that? Set that up at the top of the page. So have so say you know for the following five questions. How likely is it that, and then you can have people answer, would you use our service again, or you would recommend us to a friend, those types of things, if it's going to start the same way. Also, again, along the same lines about being clear and concise, be careful with acronyms. Um, you probably have tons of acronyms for your business, for your services or products. I know we do. Um, I mean, we even call ourselves VR instead of Rural Response. That's way too long for us. Um, but not everybody is going to know what the acronyms mean if they don't see them every day. So if you're going to use acronyms, and I'm not saying don't use them, just make sure that you are spelling out what it is. So for example, if I was talking about an ISP, I would write my first question as, which internet service provider, ISP in parentheses, do you currently use? And then your following questions could say, are you happy with your ISP? So just make sure that you're defining the acronyms that you're using so that everybody taking the survey understands your questions clearly. So once you've thought about your questions, think about your target audience. So who are you sending your questions to? Who's going to be taking your survey? Um, is it all of your customers? Um, is it some of your customers? Is it potential customers? Is it people who have just made a purchase? People who have just downloaded something from your site? Um, people who have made a donation to your organization? Think about who you're surveying and what you're planning to get from them. Um, it's really important even before you start writing your questions to think about your target audience so that you have the right information going to the right people. Most likely, all of the people on your mailing list or all of your customers are not going to find your survey relevant. Um, you know, perhaps somebody has made a, one purchase from you, but they haven't purchased in a long time, and you're asking about things that happened recently. That may not be something that's going to work for them. So think about your list of customers or contacts and think how many of them realistically have done whatever I'm asking in this survey or will be able to answer intelligently or um, even be interested in this survey. 
Um, so these are questions really to ask yourself. Um, if people find that your survey isn't really relevant to them or they can't answer it, they're obviously just not going to participate in it. And you could find that you've maybe annoyed them to some extent by sending an email or put it, the survey in front of them. Um, so these are questions to ask yourself to pare down your list to the right people to target your survey to. So let's talk a little bit about ideas for your surveys. Um, not only are there certain questions that you want to think about when you're creating your survey, but you know there's a lot of reasons you can ask or send a survey to your customers. So you can ask them what it is they like or don't like about your products, your service, um, your company, um, your organization if you're a nonprofit. Um, so there's a lot of specific information that you can ask them. Um, Ask, if you have a new product, ask about feedback from a new product or what they would like to see in upcoming products or services that you offer. Uh, January, and the reason I'm doing this webinar now, is a great time to ask how the year went for your customers or your donors or your volunteers. Um, it's a, usually a bit slower for a lot of companies and organizations in January, so it's a good time for you to ask people for information about how things went last year. Um, you also can do things like try to understand how your customers feel about your sales process. So was it easy for them? Um, were they satisfied with the, how the delivery went if they're ordering something online or if they bought something in your store and it had to be sent to them? Um, if they downloaded something from your website, did all of that work for them? What, did, what led to their making a decision to purchase from you or to donate to your organization rather than another one? Would they purchase from you again? You know, if the answer is yes or no, why, and ask those kind of specific questions. You can also ask if they're using your customer support team, for example. Um, are they happy with the support they got? Did they um, use any training or information that you provided? Um, do they love your business? Like I said, this is a great way to find out about um, advocates for your, vis for your, um, your business. And then again, are they satisfied with the product or the service? Do they have suggestions that would make it better or easier for them to use or easier for them to understand? Um, so there's a lot of things that people can give you when it comes to your business. Um, you can also ask them if there's a specific way they want to get information from you. And considering there's so many different things out there these days, um, this, is, this could be super important for you and for deciding how your marketing plan is going to work for the rest of the year. So, you know, do they want email? Probably email is still one of the most popular ways to get marketing messages to people. Do they want direct mail? Um, would they like to see more updates on Facebook rather than getting an email or Twitter or LinkedIn, or would they just rather look at pretty pictures on Pinterest and figure out what it is that you're trying to tell them? You know, what is it that they want from you? Which is really important for you as well to know not only how people want to hear from you, but also asking them what social networks they use the most will help you decide where you should be as well. Um, you can ask how often your recipients want to get an email from you. Um, what do they want in it? What kind of content are they looking for? You know, you usually have an idea of what content you want to put in an email. And of course, as you send out emails, you get feedback in the form of responses when you look at your reporting. But you can specifically ask this of your customers. Um, if you have a board, you can use surveys for voting. I've seen that done as well. Always an interesting thing. So if you're creating a survey, or you're thinking about creating a survey, here are some ideas for you. So if you've had an event, for example, um, you know, maybe you've put on a conference or a trade show, or you went to a trade show. You don't even have to be hosting the trade show. Um, or you had some kind of an event, maybe a party. Um, send out a follow-up survey afterwards. Um, and this could be for something that happens online or offline. So even if you do something like a webinar, you can send, that would be an activity, you can send um, a survey following um, after you've done the webinar and get some um, impressions from people and some feedback. Um, so a way to promote a survey for an event or an activity, um, include a link to follow-up email. Hopefully you are sending out follow-up emails after all of your events. Um, and you can also direct attendees through event materials. So for example, if you have 
if you have a party, if you have a trade show, and you're handing out materials of some kind to people, you can have information about the survey available. Um, you can you want to make sure that um, you're sending it out fairly soon after the event so that all of the details are still fresh in people's minds. Because this is a great way to find out how people liked the event that you put on or the event that you attended. Um, and then find out if there's something that you should be changing. You know, if you're having a, a holiday party or something um, and you're inviting donors and you're a um, nonprofit, you want to make sure that you're providing people the things that they're looking for in um, that kind of an event so that they come again next year. You could also do a customer satisfaction, and I have mentioned this a couple times, um, survey. And so this can be used to get feedback after people have made a purchase. Um, or you can do it after they've made a purchase and they have a question about sales or service. Or if for some reason they needed to get in touch with um, somebody who's doing some support for your product or service, uh, you can ask these kind of questions there. Um, this one gives you a lot of options for promotion. Uh, you can, again, include a link in a confirmation email. And an email is going to be a great way to get a survey to your customers or um, your potential customers. If they're on your mailing list, you can send them the survey. If you have um, a website where people can make a purchase or make a download, for example, um, have a link on the thank you page where they can give you some feedback um, through the survey. You could send a solo email as well saying, you recently made a purchase, please give us some feedback. Um, you can also do um, an offer or a discount and have a survey available as well. Um, you want to, for this type of thing, to have it available immediately. Obviously, if you're putting a link on your thank you page, that would be right away. Um, but you can also send out an email a couple weeks after somebody's made a purchase and see you know, how they enjoyed the product. Um, if you want to know how the purchase flow worked, you probably want to do that immediately. If you want to know how they liked the product, you probably want to wait a little bit after the purchase so they have the opportunity to use your product. And then, this one has a tricky name, but it has um, great use for you. And um, this would be a trend analysis survey. So basically, just asking information of your customers. So you can gather a lot of information. And this can even be part of another survey if you're asking questions about um, things like your, your products or your service. You can add a little demographic information in a survey. I think most of the surveys I've ever taken have some demographic info in there just so they can split up their findings, I think, a little bit more. But um, you, know, you can gather information like where people are located, um, you know, gender, any of those kind of things, zip codes, however you want to um, target your audience in the future for marketing, for sending emails, or for sending, put, doing posts on Facebook. Um, getting a little more information about your audience is helpful. Um, again, you can send a solo email and ask people to fill in um, your survey. You can have it on your website or your blog or a social network because this is the kind of stuff that isn't necessarily specific to an action that your customers have taken. They didn't attend event, an event. They didn't make a purchase or download something. So this is something that you could put a little more public and see the people who are hitting your blog, for example, you know, where are they coming from? Um, you can, again, also do a contest or a discount and have your survey information as part of that. Um, and you can do this as often as you need to to get the desired results. Um, having this kind of a survey could take a little bit longer to get the information that you're looking for, um, depending on the relationship you have with the people that you're targeting. Obviously, if you're putting the link on your website, people may be less interested in giving you demographic information, but if they're on your mailing list and they know who you are or who your business is, they're probably more likely to give you um, information. So um, this kind of survey you can have going for a while. So getting ready to create your survey, start out with interesting questions that people will find engaging. Um, you know. You don't want it to be like where they have to read a whole paragraph and then they have to answer some really tricky questions because then they're just going to be, oh, it's too much. I need to move on. So make sure your initial questions are easy and things that are interesting or fun 
uh, maybe have an image involved. Um, I know a lot of times when people do surveys, they put the, um, the demographic type of questions at the end. So I know as a survey taker, when I hit the part where it's asking me where I live and what my age is and what my gender is, I'm almost done. Um, and so that feels kind of like going downhill because I know all the questions to, or, or the answers to those questions. So you might want to think about if you're going to be adding that type of um, question, putting those at the end because most people see that as light at the end of the tunnel. Um, you know, when you're creating your your survey, you might want to think about doing different um, questions or different pages in the sequence that people go through when they're using your product or when they're making a purchase on your website. So, for example, you know, you can ask them questions about your website layout. Was it easy for them to find what they were looking for? Um, was the product description something that worked for them and ultimately drove a sale? Um, how did they find the pricing of your products? Was the checkout process easy? So you can use those as different sections. You know, your website layout, get some information about that. Your product information pages, get some information about that. Price point, checkout. So that would be the steps that your customer took to make a purchase. You can ask the same of people making a donation. Was it an easy process for them? Um, you could also do something along the lines of service. So how do they contact your company? Did they email? Do they phone in? Um, do they come in person? What service did they use? Who helped them or how helpful were they? So you can have um, your survey broken up into easier chunks for your customer or your potential customers, whichever it is, taking your survey so that it makes sense to them when they're going through and they can remember the, the steps that they took. And then you can cr start creating your questions. So again, they should be really clear. Um, your Respondents should understand what you're saying, so try not to make them super hard or use words that they're not going to understand. As I said earlier, remember that acronyms can be tough for people if they don't use them every day. Um, and again, try to avoid <coughs> stating the questions in the negative. So it can be really confusing to somebody taking a survey if a question is phrased in a negative way and the respondent has to say yes in order to confirm the negative statement. So try not to do that so that it's easier for people to understand that they're answering cor correctly. And then also try not to um, ask leading questions. And so an example would, would be to state a conclusion in your question and then ask for feedback. So would you buy this product in blue? Or this product is blue, what do you think? You know, you, you might want to rephrase it to something like, what colors would you like to see this product in? Red, yellow, purple, blue. And get that kind of feedback rather than saying this product is blue, what do you think? Um, or we just redesigned our website to become a leading destination. Do you think this is a leading destination, right? Because you're actually asking them, or you're basically telling them what the answer to the question is and you don't want to do that. Um, and then also if you're doing a list of options on your questions, which is pretty common um, for a survey, Make sure that um, whatever is most common or important items are not at the top of the list so that they're not just automatically going to A. Um, so, you know, maybe you want to group it um, alphabetically or find another way to mix up the options so that people are giving you good feedback based on what they're really thinking instead of going, A must be the right answer. And then adjust your survey length. Again, um, having it go on really long can be a problem for the people who are taking your survey. You want it to be about 10 minutes or less. And if you can do less, that would be better. Um, this is about 30 questions, but this is 30 basic questions. If you have a long and complicated <coughs> question, then you definitely want to have less than 30 questions. Um, also, plan the number of questions per page against the number of pages overall. Um, so if you have 30 questions, again, try to have a certain number of questions on each page so that as people are moving through, they see that progress bar getting closer and closer to the end. You know, if you have two pages and 30 questions, people are going to start feeling like it's never going to end. Um, so try to have a balance of how many pages people are saying because usually they can see the um, how many pages they have left for their survey. And then some tips here. So first of all, I said earlier, and I'll say it again, you need to do some testing. Um, 
in our system, once you've created your survey, you send a test out and then go through um, the survey and make sure everything looks good and works okay. But I would also suggest that just like you would have somebody else take a look at your email to make sure you don't have any typos or anything like that, have someone do the same thing with your survey so that somebody else who hasn't written the questions and doesn't necessarily know all the answers that you're looking for or what the results are that you're looking for takes the survey and that it makes sense to them. Um, and then also, and I say this all the time when I'm talking about um, your emails, um, especially email marketing, what would you want to see in a survey? How long would you be willing to sit and take a survey? If your survey is longer than that, you need to make it shorter um, because everybody else is going to be just like you. How long do you want to answer the questions? What kind of information are you willing to give to somebody on a survey? The other thing to keep in mind is that um, you want to keep the survey open long enough for people to answer it. And you will probably need to send a reminder email for those who haven't participated in the survey from the first go round. Um, you want to keep the survey, you can keep it open as long as you like, but you know, give people at least two weeks to do it. That may seem like a long span of time, but um, if people don't get to the survey from you, the first email that you ask them to do it or from the first time you ask them to do it, you want to give them another opportunity to do that. And then getting the word out. Now, I mentioned earlier that there are some places that you can use a link for a survey in an email, of course. Um, sending a reminder email, as I said, is really important as well. So if you're sending an email, um, it's a really easy way to ask people to take a survey. And um, all of my examples coming up here in a second are um, from emails. You know, and if you're sending out an invitation for people to take a survey, make sure it's um, a warmly written email because you are asking people to take time out of their day. So make sure it's um, a friendly and warm email that will get them to want to go and do what it is that you're asking them to. Um, and have your subject line be something that's really appealing so that when they open it, um, it, makes, uh, or it makes them want to open your email. And just like your survey, you don't want to go crazy on the length of your email. You know, tell them what you're looking for, tell them if you're offering an incentive, um, and then have a link or button or both to your survey so they can go do it. So it should be a pretty short email. It just needs to be really compelling. Um, you should expect around a 10% response rate, which probably sounds kind of low, but 10% is not too bad for a survey. And you know, if you use some of these tips and keep your survey pretty short, then you can find that you'll have a, a higher um, response rate. Um, also, what did I, oh, so you can include a link, um, this last bullet here I wanted to make sure I touched on. You can include a link in your newsletters and your marketing emails for people to take a survey, but I wouldn't rely only on that as the only way to get the survey message out. Um, you might want to start off that way and see how the response rate is. You'll probably want to do a specific invitation email for people to take a survey. Um, the problem is that if you're sending a newsletter and including a link to a survey, it could get lost in the other information that you have in your newsletter, and people may not take your survey. So that's a good place to start, but I would definitely take a look at your stats and your response rate and then think about doing just a solo email as well for sending out your emails. So as I said, I had some examples of some of, these are emails I got to take surveys. Um, this is an example um, asking for a customer review. And so that's basically a survey that you go through um, a couple of questions for the survey and then give your um, review. This one does not include an incentive. Um, this is something, though, that can uh, be tested. Uh, you can do an A-B split test with your mailing list, and then you can test different content for your survey and for the emails that you're sending. And one of the things that you can test is offering incentive and then not offering an incentive and see which one works for you. This is an email <coughs> that um, offers an incentive, and that is what the arrow at the bottom is. So it says, please share thoughts about the items that um, I just recently purchased, and I could be entered to win a $75 gift card. 
Um, and then also up at the top, um, which ends up being the pre-header text for the email, is leave a product review. So they want me to review it. They want me to um, give my um, information about how the purchase process went and how I like their products. Um, this is a survey. This is a solo invite email asking me to go take a survey. Um, it has 16 questions in the survey, and they just want to know some more information about the Cranberry Club that they have. And there's a nice big button there for taking the survey. Um, I liked this one because there was a couple things going on with this email and this survey. So first of all, um, they revamped their website, and then they want people to go take a look at the website and give their feedback. So that's doing a couple things. One, they're getting feedback on their website, but two, people are going to their website and seeing that it's new and probably easier to navigate. navigate. Um, so they're, they're accomplishing two things with this one email. Um, but they're asking for just a short um, survey, and you could win a $500 gift card. And there's only like five questions that they have for their survey. Really short and to the point, and that's the thing that a lot of people really appreciate when it comes to a survey. This is another one. So this one offers an incentive, but without a monetary value attached. So we saw the other one where they were asking for my feedback on a recent purchase, and I would be entered to win a $75 card, and there's two winners a month. So it's possible I could win. I may or may not win, but they're still asking for my feedback. This one, instead of offering a monetary incentive, it gives you a download um, once you've completed the survey. So they're asking for specific information, and then once they've compiled the data, you will actually get the report for free. So it's information that's helpful to an organization. I also like that they have a lot of links to get to the survey. Um, there's a link in the text over here. There's an enormous button to take the survey and another link. So it would be really hard for people to miss um, the ability to take this particular survey. And here's another one. This one has four questions. So there's just a short, quick uh, question. It takes just a few minutes. It says, will you take a few minutes to fill out our annual supporter survey? giant button, and there's a couple more links over here um, for people to go take the survey as well. Again, this is a specific email asking people to do the survey. And like I said before, you can include a link to a survey in any email you want, but it is likely to get lost, which is why so many people do these types of invite emails. And then this one is um, using um, surveys to get some feedback on their products. It's a little bit like the first one that we saw. Um, so these are people's um, responses to different um, products that they have here. And you can use um, this type of feedback to create things like customer favorites and then have people rate different products. This particular company frequently has five-star products in their email because they get people to give them feedback. So once you send out your survey, you will get reports. And there's a lot of different ways you can break down the reports for your survey. You can take a look initially at um, the summary of how your uh, survey went. And you can have kind of an overview of all the questions as well. So um, especially in our system, there's different, <coughs> excuse me, there's different types of questions and you get different reporting for those different questions. So you get <coughs> like these pie charts where you can see what people um, have responded to your different questions. You can also drill down into um, your reports doing things like side-by-side um, -side reporting. So you can have you can compare different questions and you can compare different responses. So you could do things like a question that says, how recently did you purchase from us? And then you can compare more recent buyers to less recent ones and you can see how they responded to the different questions. Um, so you can definitely get some really specific reporting when it comes to um, your surveys. So you can see how people are thinking. Uh, you can also do um, you can also do some where uh, ask how people who are using one service compare to those who are using another one, or one product versus another product. And again, you can see how they answered specific questions um, that way. 
You can also see which questions were left blank or the ones that people said unsure, um, so that when you're doing future surveys, you know how to rephrase those particular questions because those were obviously the ones that people got hung up on. And then you can also see if there are any common um, responses. One of the other reports that come, at least with our system, um, is called a heat map. So um, you'll see the question and then the responses, and the darker the color, the more people answered that way. And it's a really easy way for you to see you know, which was the most important to people or the most answered option for the question that you posed. So um, those make for a really easy way for you to find uh, quickly, especially how to find what people are saying about your products or your services. There's a lot more that you can do with the reports. You can also download them. Um, if you need to do some more analysis, you can download the data into Excel if you need to do some more analysis that way. And um, there is more information as well on our um, help site on how to do the reporting. So we do have surveys. Um, you can do you can test it out and get 25 free uh, responses just to see how the survey tool works. Otherwise, it's a monthly subscription and it's just based on the number of live responses you receive. So you can do the lowest one if you want to start out. And if you find you have a huge response to your survey, you can always up the number of responses that you get. Um, but most likely, unless you have a really big list, uh, you can start on the lowest pricing tier and be able to get all the answers you need for your surveys. And it's just in your account, actually. That's where this is here. If you just click on the tab in your VR account, you'll be able to access the surveys there. So just a quick summary. So before you even start writing any questions, you need to think about who you're targeting your survey to and what your goals are from the survey. And then you can start creating your questions and creating your survey based on the people who are going to be doing the um, survey and what you're expecting to get from them. Make your questions clear and concise. Um, again, the questions are going to be key, and so you want to make sure they make sense to the people taking the survey. Plan how long your survey is going to be. Again, short is the best option. Um, and then plan out your layout so that it's not hard for your respondents to figure out what it is that you're asking for. You know, Like I said, try to do it in a logical progression so that they're thinking about how they, they took the steps through your website or through whatever process you're asking them about. And try not to have too many questions on one page, but also try not to have 100 pages because you'll never get people through that. Test your content. Again, asking a couple of people to do the survey will be really helpful for feedback. But also, just looking at the responses once you've sent your survey will help you going forward. And um, make sure that you are looking at your reporting. With the surveys, obviously, your data is going to be more important. I mean, that's the whole point of the doing the survey is to look at your data. I know a lot of people send emails and don't look at the data that they get from their emails. There's a lot of information you're missing if you're not doing that. So make sure when you're sending your survey, you go back and look at all the information that people are giving you. Um, one more thing about the questions. If you're using our survey tool, we have templates that are built into it. And the templates already have um, pre-written questions. And the questions fall into all of the tips that I gave you. They're short, <coughs> they're concise, they're not leading, they're not stated in the negative. Um, they were created by professionals. They weren't written just by random people here. Um, we actually hired someone to do that. I would suggest you take a look at the templates, or at least start with the templates. And then I would go in and rephrase the questions a little bit to um, give it your personality for your company, but try not to change the overall goal of the particular question. So it's a good starting point. You don't have to start from scratch with these things, because that can also be a little overwhelming for people as well. So as always, we do have some resources for doing your surveys. Um, like I said, our help site has um, a survey tab, and there's a lot of information on setting up a survey, as well as um, a recorded um, demo. There's a recorded demo there, and I also have recorded this webinar so that you can go through this again if you want to. But um, there is a recorded demo on using our survey tool there, as well as more information about the reporting. Our blog has some information about surveys. Our blog is a good resource for just about anything when it comes to marketing your business. 
Um, we publish usually uh, four to five times a week, which is a lot. <laughs> it's a lot if you're writing for it anyway. Um, and so there's tons of information. It is not our product specific. It is very specific to marketing. So there's info on email, surveys, social media, just tips as a small business for marketing. So there's a lot of info there, all free, of course. And then we also have um, our resources website, our tab on our website. If you go to our website, Vertical Response, and click on resources, we have tons of free resources there. So we have guides, and we have recorded webinars. Um, these are guides. There's a step-by-step -step guide to survey success, nine steps to launch your first survey, and best practices for designing a survey. So there's a lot of information available for you um, at various places on Vertical Response, and all of this is free. So you can get all of this, these resources. Um, the survey tool is not free, but it is a pretty low price. 